Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to rebuild these very badly worn train re-railing frogs. So these are my own personal set of re-rail frogs. These are very old. I've got these used many years ago and I've used them on many, many derailments. Um, most of the derailments I deal with are caused by ice. Um, winter is, is really a killer. So I work with some industrial customers and a couple of short lines throughout the upper Midwest here. And these, as you can see, the flange on this side is nice and tall, but it's got some wear. But this isn't the problem. The problem is this side. When you're trying to climb up and re-rail a car, it's so badly worn here that the flange just climbs up and runs it right off again. So what we're going to do is go ahead and build this back up. And this is the culprit on both of them, so we'll just put them both up on the welding preheat post heat table and no that is not how I set the flame when I'm doing this uh, that's just for show so you can see the flame and uh, we'll go ahead and get these welded up We'll go ahead and get this thing lit up. And while it's warming up, I'll take the grinder and just kind of clean this up a little bit so we're ready to start welding. All right, so I got it down, got the rust off. It looks pretty good. Um, I saw just a few pieces that I ground off that were flakes um, from rolling material over. But now I'm just gonna set that garbage can lid on there to help contain the heat. And we'll let that warm up to about 300, maybe 350 degrees. And then, uh, then we'll start welding. Well, she's warming up. I can see the paint discoloring. Around 200 degrees. Yeah, we'll let this cook a little longer and, and uh, let it kind of normalize out in temperature and then start welding. Okay, so we're not in even heat. I've got about 400, 425 in here, 300 here, and about 195 out at the ends. So I'm going to leave the lid on it. I got the heat shut off. I'm just going to throw this uh, blanket over the top. This is a 2000 degree blanket, so that'll help let that heat kind of transfer out into the rest of it and we'll give it about 20 minutes and then go ahead and start welding it up. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. Let's uh, let's take a look and see where we are at. Yeah, that's a lot better, a lot more consistent. Um, we're right around the 350 range. Very consistent, so we'll go ahead and start welding that. Now before I get started here, I'll let you guys know what I got going. Um, because this is so warm, um, there's a lot of heat. I have this Miller Cool Belt, which is just a blower that blows cool air into the helmet, um, also known as the Fart Sniffer XL. Um, you don't want to fart where you're wearing this thing. It sucks it right up, blows it in your face. It's pretty bad. Um, and I'm wearing a uh, respirator as well just to protect myself from the fumes plus I have the shop doors open just a little bit let some fresh air in so let's start uh, lay the first bead in here and get going on this thing
So between each pass, I put the blanket back on it and let it cool for about 10 minutes to dissipate the heat out into the part, um, but maintaining the heat in the part. Um, I don't want any thermal shock, really, because this thing could crack and then I got a bigger problem to fix. I'm just trying to fix that, that bad section. So we'll just go ahead and keep on working on this one until we get it built up where we want it and then just fine tune it with the grinder and, and uh, it'll be ready to go. So we're several passes in here. We've got a ways to go to build up. And then, like I said, we'll just polish it out with the grinder. Um, but yeah, it's starting to get hot on me. So I'm gonna let her kind of settle and, and uh, normalize out for a little bit under the blanket. And uh, then we'll go back to it. So trying to keep that inner pass temperature at a happy point so that it doesn't um, have thermal shock and crack. Well, let's see where we're at. That's looking real good. It's built up nice. Um, getting the height about where I want it. Um, I think we're actually about ready to come around to the back side and build this side up some more, get the thickness there. And then uh, we should be able to grind it to fit. And I think I'm gonna build up a little bit here just to help because I can see where at one point a wheel climbed here um, yeah, they're, they're climbing. So we'll clean this one up and fill this up a little bit also, but yeah, that's looking way better.
Well, it's all built up. Uh, looks a little, I got her a little hot there, but it'll be fine. Um, in fact, I gotta do a lot of clean up here with the grinder to get this exactly the way I want it. But realistically, I wouldn't even have to do that. Um, I could just let the wheels rub it, but I'd rather clean it up. So we'll throw the blanket back on it and tomorrow when it cools off, we'll uh, polish her up. Overall, that looks really good. Just a little bit of cleanup. Um, and should be able to smooth that right out. And realistically, I don't think I would even need to smooth anything out, but because um, the wheels will wear it. But this looks really good. This is a lot better than what I had to work with before. So I'll get the grinder and start cleaning up. Well, that cleaned up pretty good. Not a lot of grinding really, but uh, we got a nice crisp edge here to catch the wheel. And on this side where I just built it up a little bit for a running surface because it was starting to roll over, this will help us on this one too. And I was noticing on the other, this one as I was doing it, and here it is, kind of make it out there's a date in the casting there. And I can't make out the month, but it looks like eight of 65. So these have been around a long time, re-railed a lot of cars, but to go from, you know, what we had before of basically nothing to catch the wheel and we we're losing cars up over the side to now having a nice crisp edge to catch that wheel and push it right over. This will help a lot. Well, that came out really well. I'll get this one off of here and get the second one up on the table. And I will actually leave that one for my young apprentice, Connor, to work on. Um, he's been learning a lot here in the shop and the machining, he's been on the lathes, he's uh, setting up the bridge port all by himself. Um, he's doing really good in the shop and really good in the welding and fabricating. Um, he's done a couple of really big weld jobs for me, which he's, he's learned a lot about welding. Um, it's been awesome watching him you know, expand his knowledge. So we'll leave that one for him and uh, he'll get that one done probably tonight. And we can put these out for uh, 
the next derailment, which hopefully won't be until next winter. And now you're probably all going to ask, when are we going to get to see a derailment video? You're not. Um, derailments are already a high stress situation, uh, a lot going on, and everybody already feels bad that it even happened. Um, you know, generally everyone I've dealt with has been 100% an accident, act of God. Usually it's ice over the rail, you know, um, a, a track that doesn't see service on a, you know, at least a twice daily. I've seen where the train went through the day before, it rained, it snowed, covered over the rail, and then the next morning they went over it and, and went in the ditch. I've seen it from snow plowing. Plow, you know, the plows on the highway plow it into the crossing and you push through it nice and slow, but you still go off because of the ice. So, it, you know, it's already a bad deal. It's already a bad situation. So. I'm not going to film derailments just just because of that um, and you know with the railroad stuff i know you all want to probably see more railroad content i'll do it when i can but 99 percent of it i cannot film um, because either the railroads don't want me to the industries i work with don't want me to or i don't want the federal government to see me doing it um, they have been pretty nasty the last several years and, and uh, nobody needs to be fined $10,000 for, for, you know, just doing the job. So it's not something I'm going to film um, much of. So if you like the content though, stick with us and there'll be a lot of cool stuff coming. There's a really cool one coming up. As soon as I can get the semi lo uh, lined up, we'll be doing that video. So stay tuned and until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.